Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. Nothing about the Porsche today unfortunately, but something equally as exciting as far as I'm concerned anyway. Uh, today we are going to be doing what is my first ever uh, review of my Crown, uh, my Broom Crown 37. So let's take a look around uh, and give you a bird's eye view. Okay, let's make a start. We're going to go for the messy bit first because this cabin is in a bit of a state today, but still. This is the um, forward cabin. It's a twin single berth uh, with double doors. Uh, normally this would be made up um, for two people, but it's turned into a bit of a junk room uh, on this trip. Um, you've got uh, LED lighting in here, central heating. Uh, there's a dehumidifier there, your own TV, and lots of toys and stuff that all belong to my daughter, who sadly isn't with us today. She's at school. So that's the forward cabin. Uh, coming out of the forward cabin, you step into, uh, or you pass through what is the galley. Uh, recently, I refurbished this, uh, worktops and units and stuff like that. Uh, basically, quite compact. You've got two cupboards down here with all the various pots and pans and stuff like that in it. Uh, fridge uh, in there, quite well stocked, a few cans of beer. Uh, cooker, three burner hob, uh, oven, and a pan drawer underneath there. All this is quite new, so it's uh, all in remarkably good condition. Uh, microwave, an extractor, etc, uh, etc. Et and then opposite the galley is what we call the day heads. Going into here, this is still quite original. Uh, I've had the boat now about six years and I'm sort of slowly giving her little facelifts uh, without taking away her character. So in here, you've got basically uh, a standard size toilet, I suppose you could say, uh, and a wash basin. Uh, if this can be used as a wet room. Uh, underneath there is a sunken shower tray which you could also use but I don't choose to do that because I have a, a shower a, a permanent shower in the aft of the vessel coming up the steps from the galley um, this is the main saloon uh, basically you've got a table uh, here which is kind of a chart table technically but that folds upwards and allows two people sometimes three uh, to sit at that and eat inside various storage underneath a rather hideously large TV, but it's got to be done, hasn't it, at the end of the day, because she has satellite TV on board. And then you've got the main seating area, stroke sofa, which also pulls out uh, and it comes out to about, about here uh, and makes a rather nice double bed uh, if you're uh, in need of that extra space. And then you've got an internal helm, the lower helm, as I call it, uh, basically with all the instruments, etc that you have uh, upstairs in the upper helm stroke semi flybridge, as I call it. Uh, there's no navigational stuff in here in terms of a chant plotter, purely and simply because I tend to do all my navigating and main uh, operations from upstairs. But you've got basically everything you want. You've got a, a wander lead, which you can plug in outside uh, and control the boat on a nice day and uh, sit out and enjoy the sunshine. That screen there, not switched on currently, is uh, CCTV in the engine room, and that allows you to keep an eye on the engines to make sure that everything's okay. Uh, basically, uh, that's it for the main saloon. Uh, and then we'll go down into the aft cabin. You've got a spiral staircase, which basically leads up to the upper deck and down to the aft cabin. So let's take a little look at that. That's her registration number, etc., etc. Oh, it's a bit cooler in here. It's so warm today. Uh, basically, this is the aft cabin. You've got an island, uh, a double island bed. Um, she looks lovely when she's lit up at night, and I'll give you a nighttime view, hopefully, a little bit later on. But you have your aft cabin, which is here like so. You have drawers uh, and storage either side. There are wardrobes. Uh, these are uh, ventilated via dehumidifiers, keeps everything nice and dry and smelling fresh. 
uh, his and hers uh, on the other side there. This door here leads to what is the shower room. And basically, uh, again, it's all ventilated, uh, etc. But you've got your own shower there with a mixer, etc. And looking across to the other side, this is your ensuite, as it were. Um, toilet, left the seat up again, and never mind. Uh, but basically, this is my bathroom that I tend to use uh, more often than not. And the, the guests use the, the front one and use it for um, as a day. I use it as a day head as well. And that's just a view from the door up to the saloon. In the middle here, if I close the cabin door, this takes you into. Oh, it's me. This takes you into the engine room. You crawl into it from here. Uh, I did show a little bit of footage from the engines earlier while they're running. It is so hot in here. But basically, what you've got here are two Perkins uh, HT6354 turbos. They have recently been fully refurbished by Perkins. Uh, down in Peterborough, I had a little problem with one on an oil pressure system. So I fundamentally sent it, took it out, hooked it out, sent it in, had them strip it down to inspect it and discovered it had a, a number of issues with the oil pump and there was some general wear and tear in there. So I decided to have them both bench stripped and fully rebuilt. Pistons, liners, rings, ends, shells, you name it, it's had a... Uh, here is the Sterling charging system and there is a fuel uh, filtration system built into this one as well. Again, all this end is fully uh, central heated. She has two uh, Wabasto heaters, a uh, 5K and an 8K, uh, which keeps her nice and toasty in the winter. There is an immersion heater there, which is heated by the engine. That's that thing coated with a red jacket. Uh, and she also has electric in there as well. And that is your expansion tank over there, which deals with your fresh water system. And the two yellow things there, and there are the couplings for the drive shafts, because she's sh uh, shaft driven as opposed to leg. Lovely. Oh, get glad to get out of there. That there concludes uh, the, the owner's cabin, stroke master cabin. If we go up the stairs, that brings you into the upper deck uh, stroke, upper helm, which is that there, uh, Rain Marine system there, and an old Garmin plotter, which I just love and I'll never get rid of. Uh, all your gauges, depth, echo, radar, etc. cetera. Um, engine temperature, um, engine oil pressure, gearbox oil pressure, uh, RPMs. Our counters clocks are down on the lower helm that's your helmsman seat there with your throttles. Uh, there's a passenger seat there. And this is what is in effect the dining table, which actually lowers quite easily to a, be a coffee table. Ideal for our fresco dining, and particularly when the weather is as glorious as it is today. So basically that's the interior of uh, my broom crown. 37. We are currently moored in Stangate Creek, uh, Charfleet's Creek, over in Kent. We've come over today from my mooring uh, in Benfleet. Uh, I'm on my own today. It's kind of a sea trial uh, thing just to test a few things out. So we are fundamentally just uh, checking stuff out, testing a few things uh, before I take a few of my pals out for uh, a couple of benders. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look. Uh, out the front, or should I say the bow. Okay, walking down either side, you have plenty of secure passage uh, from the stern to the bow. And then on here, this is basically the forward deck, like a sun deck. Uh, you can put cushions up on the top there and sunbathe on there. Uh, I have uh, this contraption here, which houses my uh, generator system which I use for, you know, just keeping the batteries topped up when I'm at anchor, etc. I'll be putting that on a bit later. Uh, electronic or electric uh, windlass, that was quite new, uh, just about 18 months, two years ago. And we're, like I say, we're currently at anchor. Uh, we are 
Oh, we are about four hours after tide. Uh, I may have to move actually because I'm, it does dry out in places here and I'm not in my usual perch because I wasn't the first to arrive so I didn't have the pick of the crop. Uh, and I think there's actually a swimmer over there. Where do you see that? You see, I can't see because of the sun. Yeah, it is indeed. <laughs> there's a swimmer waving as well. There you go. So that's the outside of the brood crown. We enjoyed that. Uh, very shortly I'm going to launch the rib and uh, give you some shots from Water's Edge. So I've launched the tender and we're going to take a little look uh, at the broom crown on the outside. As I say, she is a 37 foot broom crown. Basically, uh, I've had her about six, five to six years now. There's quite a lot of work done to her. Uh, all required, just generally did it. Top of her, keep her in good condition. Um, she comes out every like 12 to 18 months and has an anti foul. Uh, she's recently, uh, or last May, she was done. I'm not doing it this year because uh, I had so little use uh, out of her with lockdown and everything else going on. But um, yeah, she's got a nice set of davits on the back, which uh, the tender, which is a uh, Sir Marine. Uh, sports rib uh, hangs off the back. You've got your bathing platform there. Let's try and get in a little bit closer. I apologise if it's a little bit windy. I hope to uh, go round and give the water line a bit of a deck scrub later on, purely because I can and I don't like it when she's got the dirty side. It's no so there she is. my uh, tender to mudslide uh, it's an ST 280 uh, from Shaw Marine an Italian company uh, fantastic bit of kit does about 23 knots flat out with about two people in it um, it's, I've had three in it and you know you're talking probably 20 something like that and you know in the case of an emergency you can get four or five in it um, to get you out of trouble if you needed to but yeah lovely bit of kit I do like a bit of speed. Hope you've enjoyed my review of my Broom Crown 37. A couple of things I might not have mentioned. Uh, cruising speed, uh, she sits quite comfortably at 12, 13 knots. Uh, top speed about 23, 24, but I'll be honest with you, I don't really do that unless I really have to. Uh, engine wise, I think I've already said they're uh, Perkins HT6354. 
uh, diesels, uh, turboed. They were reconned fully uh, and at a rather large price, but well worth it. Total confidence in them. No leaks. They're beautiful bits of kit. So I'm well pleased with that. And she's a 1983 vessel. Um, what number is she? She is uh, number 318 in the build from Brooms at, in Norfolk. Anyway, I'm going to finish up now with a number of little clips from the journey over. We headed off from Benfleet Moorings and we are now currently in Charfleet's Creek or Stangate Creek uh, in off the Isle of Sheppey, I suppose it is. Yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Paul stuff coming up soon. The review is on its way, I promise. Take care for now. Thank you. Enjoy the sunshine. Bye for now.